Hey everyone, it's DK and today we're going to talk about remote work, specifically about the best apps that you can use while you're working remotely. Now, as more and more people are getting involved in remote work these days due to the situation, um, there's a bunch of people that face these challenges while you're working remotely. Now, I've been working remotely for over six years now, three of which almost exclusively with completely remote team members distributed all over the world. And I know about remote working challenges firsthand. However, even though I'm still a strong advocate for remote work, I think that it's here to stay and it's definitely not for everyone, but as you get a taste of it, as you're gonna figure out how to face those challenges and actually overcome them, you're gonna benefit a lot from remote work and most certainly, trust me, you're gonna stay here as a remote worker and you're no longer gonna to wanna to go to the office. Now, knowing all those challenges, I decided I wanna share my experience to help those of you guys who are new to remote work to get up to speed and actually have fun with it and keep working remotely as long as you want. And we're gonna start from the best apps for remote work. So first and the most important challenge people have to overcome when they start working remotely is basically to figure out how they're gonna communicate with one another, given the situation that they are not in the same room or could be you know, located many miles away from each other. And you may suspect that any chat or video conferencing tool is great for that, and you're absolutely right, but there are two apps, to my experience, that are absolutely the best in the matter of remote communication. Let's start from Slack. Slack is the best chat tool for work so far. Compared to other apps with similar purpose, Slack's ergonomics and attention to workers' needs is exceptional. The reason for that is because developers of this app were listening to the audience very closely from day one of their existence and created the tool that does all you need and want right when you need and want it in the easiest way possible. One of the all-time favorite features of mine, for example, is the ability to split chats to different channels. Um, think of it as like of a meeting rooms in your real office where conversations can happen separately and don't create noise, but rather form specific focus discussions. Okay, the next app is Zoom. When it comes to video conferencing calls, um, there's no competition to Zoom. Over the years, I've tried lots of different apps, and even though they did the job, Zoom defeated them all. Since our team members are distributed across all parts of the world, reliability and convenience of conversations is vital for flawless work. I've been on calls where dozens of people participated simultaneously with their cameras on, and even though I could be on a mobile internet, I never lost connection or experienced delays. I don't know for sure how developers were able to achieve such a level of performance, but Zoom works like magic so far. Okay, the next big challenge, aside from communication, is collaboration. I mean, it is great when you can connect with people that you work with and talk to them and communicate them over chat tools and video conferencing tools, but communication is not enough. When it comes to work, there's so many more tasks than just talking to each other. And it could be sharing your work, uh, communicating complex ideas or flows, discussing visuals, and the list goes on and on. Luckily, there's a great set of tools that are gonna help you collaborate with your team members by transferring your offline work to the digital environment. To start off, I would suggest trying out Miro, an online whiteboard that allows people to collaborate remotely just like you would in a physical office, or even better. Use color post-it notes, doodles, shapes, tags, and more, all in the same space, in real time, by many participants at the same time. Okay, the next is Dropbox. File sharing is well known for years now, but I just couldn't ignore Dropbox as it is even more reliable, convenient, fast and powerful as it's ever been and still remains my favorite app for backing up and sharing important work files. The next set of apps, maybe the whole ecosystem, is Google Drive and it's G Suite. Even though Google has its own cloud storage that I also love, actively use and recommend, the best part that stands out is their G Suite, a set of online document tools. I can't stress enough how often our team uses docs, sheets and slides. To explain it in the easiest way, it's like Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint respectively, but hosted online with controlled access and permissions to allow different people to work together on the same documents simultaneously. The next step is Lucidchart. While being a perfectionist when it comes to logic and flow diagrams, I just can't skip this focus but super slick app that helps me communicate complex flows and ideas. It is super intuitive and easy to create all sorts of flows in Lustre Chart, but I'm still amazed how powerful the tool is, which allows me to achieve any level of sophistication and complexity depending on my needs. 
And of course, it is cloud-based and allows collective collaboration. Next step is Envision. Now, depending on your role, you may not use this tool at all, but since I'm a designer, I have got to include Envision to the list. If you are working on websites, interfaces, and apps, Envision is a workhorse that is always there to help visualize interactions and designs and collaborate on them online with your team. The next app is Trello. There are a lot of great project and task management tools out there. But if you are just starting to work remotely, Trello will be great for you. It's super easy to set up and use, but it gives you huge power over your task management and it's also very convenient to work collectively with other team members. Now that comes down to collaborative apps. But what about your connectivity? Uh, the thing is that as you work remotely, most likely you're going to be connecting with other people over the internet and using a lot of online credentials and keys from accesses that not from physical doors, but digital doors to any websites and apps. So the next big chunk I would like to talk about is networking security. One of the best practices in working remotely is to use VPN connection, which is secure connection over some external servers that just um, helps you protect your data as it streams down and flows through the internet. One of the things for that is to use VPNs. Uh, my personal favorite is TunnelBear. I've been using it for a couple of years and I'm pretty happy with it, but there are a ton of out there and you can use and try any one of those. And if you're already using it, that's great for you, just keep on using it. But remember that security is very important and I strongly recommend you using VPN connection. The next big thing is password management. Just like in a VPN market, there's a ton of password managers. To me, one password turned out to be great. I've been using it for a couple of years now as well, and I'm just happy with it. Just like with a VPN, I'm strongly recommending you using any password management, whether it's one password or any other one out there. Just remember that it's not enough these days to create a strong password and use it as is, because even if it's a strong password, at a certain point, it could be compromised. And the best practice is to separate unique passwords to each and every online account, especially work-related, and actually generate something that makes no sense, that is super secure, and then you can store it in your password manager and don't be afraid that you're gonna lose track of it or forget about it. Now, this is a hidden gem, but when it comes to connectivity and remote work, you may gonna often find yourself working on bad connection or public Wi-Fi, or for example, using a hotspot. And for this situation, I love trip mode. Consider trip mode as a filter for your data and speed. So what it does, it basically blocks out some background loading, uh, downloading, whatever, apps from using your internet, and you can just filter it down to specific apps that you need at a certain point in time, which is going to allow you to save money, save speed, and have more reliable internet overall. I mean, this is it with the main set. However, I have a couple of bonus apps for you that are just amazing, they are not obvious, and you get to know that they are super useful as you have more experience with remote work. So just try them out, test them out, and let me know what you think. First app is Muzzle. When you work remotely, sometimes, and pretty often actually, you have to share your screen over the, let's say, video conferencing tool to your coworkers to communicate certain ideas, show a presentation, or just collaborate on some doc. So what Muzzle does is, while you start share screen share, it blocks out all notifications that pop up on your screen, whether it's your personal messages or some uh, work-related conversation with some other people, those people that are seeing your screen during the conference call sharing won't going to be able to see your notifications. Thus, well, you save yourself from embarrassment or maybe just uh, accidentally sharing some information that you should not be sharing. Another great app is the Great Suspender. Now, while you work remotely, you're going to be using internet much more, browsers are going to be loaded up with tabs, and that all is going to slow down your computer and internet significantly. The Great Suspender is a tool that allows you basically mute some of the tabs and just, you know, it just puts them on the standby mode. So they don't eat up RAM, they don't eat up speed of your computer, they don't eat up internet. And as you're gonna need them, you just click on the suspended uh, tab, it's just gonna load back again, and you're gonna get access to that website that you've been browsing for previously in a split moment while not loading up your computer. The next tab is Bartender. Bartender is the app that helps you to manage your menu bar. Now, as you're going to be downloading more apps to your computer, installing them, the menu bar is going to just be like shrinking, 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 loading up with a ton of other apps. And 
you could just you know expand so much that you won't going to be able to see any apps anymore of there or some of them they're just going to be hidden by some native mac controls so the bartender allows you to it's basically like a collapse expand menu that allows you to control which uh, app icons you want to show by default, which ones you want to hide, uh, and just expand by the click on those three dots at the corner. And of course, you can even like hide them completely and don't take up space at all. The next step is timeout. Now, as you work remotely, sometimes you may find yourself focusing so much on a certain task that you just simply forget to take some breaks. And by doing that, you simply put your mental and physical health at risk. For example, sometimes I may focus on certain tasks so much that I don't realize that hours are passing by and back starts hurting. So for that, I use timeout. Timeout allows you to create chunks of dedicated work time separated by smaller uh, chunks of break time. That allows you to basically focus, but then at a certain point, a huge overlay with palm trees uh, just pops up all over the screen and it signalizes you that you just have to take a break and then you come back in a couple of minutes and just start working back again. But that small break time allows you to de-stress, allows you to stretch, allows you to move a little bit and just overall to improve your health and not to forget about work-life balance. Last but not least is Clean My Mac. Well, it's not technically a remote dedicated application, it's just a service tool for your Mac. But as you work more and more remotely, you're going to understand that your computer is going to be getting tired of all of the things that are happening, of all of the processes on it. The RAM could be eaten up by a lot of apps. Um, the storage could be beaten up by huge files and some old stuff that you know need and simply just system junk and iTunes data. So Clean My Mac allows you quickly to glance through all of the system and see where are those you know problematic places are and just clean them up and prolong the health and overall lifetime of your computer that will make your work remotely simply more reliable and just fun. Now that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you did use some of the apps and you didn't like them and why. Let me know if you have any other apps that you use that I haven't mentioned in this video and I would love to check them out because I'm constantly in the, in the look of improving my own work. So I would appreciate that. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.